So, can you tell me how much inheritance you received from your father? A lot. That day had just ended with my father's funeral. In the heavy air of that night, my husband Daniel suddenly brought up the topic of inheritance. I heard that your father left a fortune of around three million dollars. How much of that ended up in your hands? My heart was still trembling with sorrow from my father's death, but faced with an inconvenient question from my husband, I impulsively lied. I didn't receive anything. The inheritance was decided to be inherited by my younger sister and mother. At this lie, Daniel's face broke into a smile, pleased with the situation. I see. As I thought, you weren't valued that much in your parents' home. My prediction was spot on. I I've decided we're getting a divorce. I can't be with you any longer as you bring misfortune. I've already found someone else to remarry, so please disappear from this place. Just as my husband wished, I ended up signing the divorce papers. My husband and my family mocked me for being at my lowest, but ironically, they misunderstood the joy that this betrayal brought me. They still couldn't comprehend it. My name is Nancy. I have a younger sister named Kelly, and we are a family of four. However, from a young age, there has never been a lack of quarrels between my sister and me. Especially my mother would always take my sister's side in every little argument, which made me feel constantly isolated. My father was the only one on my side, but he was almost never home due to work, so I grew up isolated in my parents' house. Even as an adult, the situation didn't change. I had no choice but to give up on going to college. But as soon as I secured a job, I was informed that my sister was going to a private university. Kelly is doing so well academically. There's no way we can't send her to college. Nancy, on the other hand, is slow and inefficient. It would be a waste of time even if she went. You are already a working adult. You'll be contributing to the household finances. And in addition to that, please take care of Kelly's tuition. You're her older sister, so it's only natural for you to support your younger sister, right? Mom just laid it all out as if she was speaking the absolute truth. I've been patiently enduring the unfairness up to now, but I couldn't help but cry and feel indignant about this matter. Seeing my reaction, my younger sister, who clearly showed her disgust, bluntly said the following. My younger sister, Kelly, is like a ball of self-esteem. She has absolute confidence in her own abilities and often looks down on me with that attitude. Her words are often sharp, and they can leave deep wounds in my self-esteem. Isn't it because you lack the ability? I'm better looking and I have better grades than you. That's why you should at least try to put in some effort yourself. It's really disappointing that you can't even do that basic thing. Unable to bear such a heartless family environment any longer, I decided to get a job and move out of the house. Thanks to being forced to do housework since I was a child, I had no trouble living on my own. In fact, I felt comfortable with my newfound freedom. For the first few months, my father continued to send me a little bit of money, but suddenly, that support came to an end. Instead, I received an unexpected letter from my mother. It seems that your father has been sending you money on his own. However, you haven't contributed to your sister's tuition or financially assisted your parents' home at all, so you have no right to receive that money. Soon, I will send you a bill for the equivalent amount of money you should have received up to now, and you will repay that amount. Continuing to steal is not allowed. Holding the cold letter from my mother, which lacked any emotion, and the bill meticulously calculated, I was so disgusted that I no longer wanted to interact with her. Reluctantly, I decided to send the designated amount of money. To put an end to it all in my heart, and to avoid any new turmoil, I secretly moved to another apartment. Time passed, and I decided to marry a kind-hearted man named Daniel, whom I met at work. At this significant turning point, I decided not to start my new life carrying the past with me. I wanted to cut ties with my parents' house. To report the engagement in person, I knocked on the door of my parents' house for the first time in many years. There I saw my father, who used to work tirelessly as the breadwinner of the family. However, the weight of time was heavily etched on his face, and it was hard to find any trace of his former self. The once dignified figure of my father was now diminished by his bent back, and every time he stood up, he couldn't hide the pain. Upon seeing me, my mother let out a bitter voice. Oh, you've finally decided to come back. You're such an ungrateful daughter, never showing any gratitude or sending money back home. What do you want now? When I asked about my father, my mother answered reluctantly, yet with a sense of superiority. Your father, you know, he's been having back problems since last year. He can't go to work anymore and just sits at home all day. He's really in the way. He's slow at everything, just like when you were living here. 
Truly, both of you are so useless. Daniel couldn't hide his surprise at the atmosphere in the room, but as soon as my younger sister Kelly entered, he was captivated by her beauty. Are you Nancy's sister, Kelly? You're incredibly beautiful. I can hardly believe you two are sisters. Daniel praised Kelly to the skies. Since entering college, my younger sister Kelly had become increasingly selfish, and now, as a full-fledged adult, she was embarrassingly flamboyant in both her clothing and hair color. Despite being old enough to have graduated from college, she seemed unable to shake off her student mindset, evident in her lack of a proper attitude towards learning. In front of me, Kelly flirtatiously made gestures and pretended to touch Daniel, as if she was putting on a show. Not only was this behavior unpleasant, but seeing Daniel drawn to such a sister caused me deep pain. I stated quietly, I won't be staying here long. I've decided to marry Daniel. And with that, I'm ending my relationship with this house as well. Mother while indifferently eating snacks. If you're planning to cut ties, could you at least wait until your father's cake giving is over? Mother said, he needs cake giving now. But I really don't want to do it, and I don't want to burden Kelly with such a demanding role either. She's enjoying her life as a working adult right now. It would be a misfortune for her to waste her time on such a trivial matter, don't you think? So, Nancy, you take care of your father. The two of you are equally incompetent, so it should work out just fine. Mother declared, I didn't even have the luxury to feel anger at my mother's sudden demand. Nevertheless, considering my sick father, I had no choice but to follow my mother's words. Thus, my life took a sudden turn, with frequent trips back home and a new routine of caregiving. It was only after this caregiving life began that it became clear that not a single family member was working. My younger sister showed no signs of looking for a part-time job, even in her free time. Meanwhile, my mother had confined herself inside the house since her husband fell ill. However, when it came to shopping or dining out, the two of them spent money lavishly. They led a life of luxury, splurging without hesitation. Behind this wasteful spending was the father's savings, as he was unable to work. They were using their father's bank book and wasting his savings without his permission. I couldn't believe that my father had remained silent about this fact even though he was aware of it. When I asked my father why, he spoke wearily. Nancy, even if I tell you, the more you do, the heavier the burden on your shoulders becomes. They won't change, and I don't want to put any more hardship on you. You've already been through enough. I spoke with a voice mixed with resignation and sorrow. When I thought about my father, I pictured him as the center of the family, constantly working hard. He was a unique presence, pouring devoted love into me, and I felt determined to save him. Then suddenly, I received news of my father's ill health from the hospital. In this urgent situation, I felt the need to rush to my father's side immediately. However, I decided to visit my parents' house first. There, I saw the calm figures of my mother and sister Kelly in the living room. They were glued to the television and phased by my entrance, completely lost in the program. When I asked my mother about the call from the hospital, Oh, your father. He just fell and bumped his head a little. They took him in an ambulance, so he's fine now. There's no need for you to go out of your way to do anything. My mother answered lightly. However, when I insisted, but I need to go to the hospital. I'm worried about dad. My mother became colder. Now, don't get so heated. Even if something happens, we'll get insurance money, so we'll manage there's really nothing to worry about. My mother dismissively stated. Despite feeling deep disappointment and anger inside due to my mother's cold response, I left the scene immediately and headed straight to the hospital. Upon arrival, I found my father connected to numerous tubes and wires, lying unconscious and in a drowsy state. As I approached softly, my father somehow managed to open his eyes, recognizing my presence and faintly uttering a sound. With an exhausted expression, he apologized for the sudden turmoil. I'm sorry, Nancy. This has all happened so suddenly. I think this must be a punishment from the heavens for my accumulated sins. I've failed in my duties as a family protector, as a father. Leaving these words behind, he quietly closed his eyes, never to open them again. With a trembling voice, I responded, that's not true. It's okay. I have always loved you, Dad. So please get better and come back. Beside the white hospital bed, I desperately clung to my father's gradually cooling hand, but he never squeezed back. About a week later, I received a phone call. It was from a lawyer entrusted with my father's will. According to the will, the assets left behind, which amount to a total of $3 million, are designated to be inherited by you, Nancy, said the lawyer calmly. $3 million. I repeated, disbelief filling my voice. 
In fact, the bank book my mother held was the one my father made public to the family. Unbeknownst to anyone, he had another bank book, secretly stashed away, containing a whopping $3 million. The information about this secret asset was to be inherited by me alone, without the knowledge of the rest of the family, as instructed in the will. This was a thoughtful consideration from my father, concerned about my life after inheriting the assets. Knowing this new fact, I was deeply moved by my father's profound love and consideration, my heart swelling with gratitude and emotion. It was after my father's death that I learned the truth about the hidden legacy. Seeking the bank book, I headed to my parents' house, only to find my mother and sister, Kelly, standing at the entrance with hostile postures, seemingly blocking my way. With a suspicious gaze, my mother looked at me and asked in a chilly tone, What are you here for? Dad has left this world, and now what are you prowling around for? Money? Property? It's really a vulgar story, isn't it? Kelly also didn't try to hide her challenging attitude at all. Everything in this house will be inherited by us. The house, the car, everything that dad left here. So we don't need people like you, who steal from graves, around here. The two of them wouldn't listen to anything I said, and I was just confused. Wait a minute. I came here just to take back the items filled with dad's precious memories. Plus, if this is about inheritance, I should have legal rights too. At that moment, my mother, as if to interrupt my words, pulled out a piece of paper and showed it to me. It was clearly a new will, and it stated that all of our father's assets were to be passed on to my mother and Kelly. However, the handwriting was obviously Kelly's at just one glance. It was clearly different from the sophisticated writing our father had shown while he was alive, and a rough and arrogant penmanship was there. With a trembling voice, I asked, Is this really a will written by Dad? My heart was filled with anger and confusion in front of this unbelievable document. No matter what you think, this document is the will. The content here is well known not only to the entire family, but also to the neighbors. It's impossible to change this will now, no matter what you say. And with that, I was not even allowed to set foot in the house and had no choice but to reluctantly head home that day. However, Daniel was waiting for me on my way back. Did you go to your parents' house? If you had told me a little earlier, I would have accompanied you. That's a shame. I wanted to meet your sister too. It's none of Daniel's business. I went to check on the assets left by my father, but in the end, I was turned away without being allowed to set foot in the house. I see. So specifically, how much is the inheritance from your father? I'm not sure of the exact amount, but if you combine the house, land, and various other things registered under my father's name, it should amount to quite a bit. Um, so how much will Nancy inherit? Faced with Daniel's question, I mumbled and couldn't say anything. A strong intuition inside me was ringing alarm bells, telling me I couldn't reveal the truth here. Actually, the inheritance is supposed to be split entirely between mom and Kelly, so there's nothing left for me. Hearing my answer, Daniel stood up, quickly went to his room, grabbed the divorce papers, and came back. He then thrust the divorce papers in front of me as if he had made a decision. He spoke, not bothering to hide his obvious disappointment. I expected this. You've always been an uncomfortable presence for them. There's a perfect sister there, and it's only natural for you to be overshadowed by her. As for the inheritance, there's nothing left for you. What a situation. For me, there's no advantage in being with you whether you are here or not. So, will you divorce me? To be honest, I've been in close contact with your sister recently, and frankly, you've been in the way. In front of me was the divorce paper, already signed by Daniel. Without hesitation, I picked up the pen and wrote my name on it. As I watched Daniel quickly leave to submit it to the city hall, I suppressed a slight smile in my heart. I knew that his satisfied smile was the last one I would see. A delayed but certain retribution for my mother, sister, and all the people who had made my father and me suffer had just begun. The next day, a new morning came, and I spoke to the lawyer holding my father's will, arranging for him to accompany me to my parents' house. In the living room of my parents' house, when I presented the legally recognized authentic will to my mother and sister, their previously confident expressions changed instantly. They repeatedly read the words written on the document. This can't be. There is a legal will here clearly stating that only Kelly and I are to inherit. To that claim, the lawyer calmly responded. Well then, to verify the authenticity of this will, let's proceed with a handwriting analysis. If this will turn out to be a deliberately created forger app, you'll be charged with fraud. Are you okay with that? To this question, my mother couldn't find any words to counter and just fell silent. The lawyer then continued, pressing on with harsh truths. I am well aware of the deceased situation. 
Even after he required care, he was neglected, and his personal belongings were sold without permission. It seems your sister got caught up in nightlife and gambling, and as a result, she withdrew the money to pay off her debts from the deceased's personal savings. These cruel acts are why you all were deprived of any inheritance rights. If you continue to infringe upon Nancy's legal rights, we are prepared to take this to court. Are you prepared for that? As the lawyer finished speaking, my mother and sister were like ghosts or empty shells, only able to sit there. I didn't miss this chance. I got hold of the savings account book that my father had hidden, made up my mind to leave, and decided that this was the final moment to break away from my family. Against Daniel's intentions, he married into the family without the topic of inheritance coming up, convinced by my mother and sister to start a married life with them for the sake of living expenses. Unaware of anything, he did not even imagine that my mother and sister actually didn't have any inheritance hidden away, and he took reckless actions toward the future, like buying an expensive car and quitting his job. His life was filled with luxury and a false sense of happiness, but it was all superficial. However, he eventually faced reality, realizing that there was actually no inheritance. Daniel was dumbfounded. It was the moment when his true nature, craving for property, came to light. In a panic, he contacted me. Nancy, I was wrong. I don't need anything else in my life but you. I want to start over. But my response was calm and resolute. I don't need you anymore. Plus, you have a new wife now, don't you? Take care of Kelly. Leaving those words behind, I quietly hung up the phone. What I knew was that just before Daniel contacted me, I had also received a call from my sister. The call from Kelly, my sister, was full of anger and disappointment. Because of this, my life has turned into a nightmare. As soon as Daniel married me, he quit his job and foolishly began to waste money. I never imagined I would end up with a man only interested in money. It feels like my family registry has been tainted. What are you going to do about it? I remained calm without showing my emotions. On the other hand, I did not break my calm demeanor even in front of my angry sister, Kelly, who was openly expressing her emotions. It seems like you are also obsessed with money, Kelly. I think you and Daniel make a very compatible couple in terms of values. Well, it seems Daniel has been close to you since the time we were married. Now that your relationship has developed further, shouldn't we celebrate it? However, the affair is a different matter. I'll be demanding alimony soon for that. From now on, we'll only be in contact through lawyers. This is probably the last time I'll hear your voice. Surprised and puzzled, Kelly asked. Are you really my sister? Without losing my composure, I calmly responded. It was you and your family who didn't treat me as part of the family. After exchanging these words, I cut off the call with my sister, blocked her number, and decided to sever their connection forever. Now free, I used the inheritance I received from my father to buy a warm, new home and moved in. In my new job at the office, I started my new duties as an administrative assistant, and amidst my busy days, I savored the joys of living alone. Although I sometimes felt the loneliness of being alone, I had the priceless presence of my family, my late father serving as emotional support. Every time I left the house, I would always say, I'll do my best today, dad, to my father's portrait. And it seemed like my father in the photograph was softly smiling back at me, as if he wanted to say something. This had become my daily routine and her emotional support to start each new day.